Hello, Bamboo 2.10 is finally here and I'm going to show you all of the new features that are included in this release. The most important one is the new variance functionality, which I know a lot of you have been expecting for a while. We're also adding some new tokens for the token section and some quality of life features that will make your workflow easier. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so for our demo, I've already created a button here that is a component and we're going to create variants out of it. But before we jump into that, I just want to quickly remember what a component is. It is a master design element that can be reused in our designs by creating copies out of it. So when I create a copy, this copy always stay connected to the original. So if I make a change in that original one, that change is going to propagate to our copies. With variants, we add the ability to have multiple versions of that component and if I create a copy of one of the variants I can easily switch between variants from the components panel and that just allows for a quicker workflow but also for cleaner libraries that are easier to browse and uh, I'd say the most magical thing of variants is that you can make changes to those copies and then if I switch for another variant this change remains. Okay, so let's begin. We have our component and we want to create variants out of it. We have several ways to do this. One is by selecting the component and right clicking on it, you'll get this context menu and just select the create variant option. You can also select the component and go to the design tab in the component section. You'll see there's a new icon and if you click on it, you'll get one variant. You can also use the menu that appears underneath that icon and just select the create variant option. And alternatively, we have the shortcut Control K. If you select an element that's not a component, it will turn it into a component. But if you select a component, it will create a variant. And if you select a variant, it will keep on creating variants. Okay, so now we have our two buttons, but they look the same. So I'm actually going to make some changes. And for that, I'm going to bring in an icon from a library that I have attached. And I'm just going to quickly grab it change the color, going to delete text, and also I'm going to adjust the padding for a bit so it looks more rounded. Okay, so now we have our text button, our icon button, and we need to assign them specific properties and values so we can actually use them when we have copies in our designs. If I select my component, I can go to the design tab and see that Penpot has already assigned it generic property names and values. I'm going to click on it and call this type. And as well, if I select the individual variants, I can see the property input here. And I can also click this, I'm going to call it text. And this one, I'm going to call it icon. We now go to the layers area. You'll see that our variants are named with the specific property values that we've assigned to them. If I were to double click on the layers name, I'll see that I get type equals text. And this is following the formula property equal property value. So now we want to add our states to the buttons and by pressing Ctrl D, I'm going to duplicate them. By default, when you create variants, that area gets a flex layout, but you can just remove it if you want or perhaps turn it into a grid layout instead. For this case in particular, I'm going to stick with the flex layout. Now I'm going to modify the appearance of the buttons so they're actually different states. A few tweaks later. And it's time to add that new property to our variants. We can do that directly from the layers tab by adding a comma to the current property and adding the formula that we mentioned earlier, property equal property value. For this case in particular, our property is going to be called state and our property value is going to be called default. And as you can see, if I select other variants, that new property is created for all of them. We can also add new properties from the design tab. So underneath the variants icon, you'll see a plus button. And if you click on it, a new property is created. And you can do this by selecting the, the variant as well as by selecting the whole component. And once your new property is created, you can also remove it by clicking on the minus button that's sitting next to it. Now I'm going to update each and every variant so they have a unique combination of property values. So I'm going to grab 
all of the text buttons and I'm going to select the text type from the selector here because we had already input this name now it's available for us to select and for all the icon buttons i'm going to do the same now you see we get a little warning underneath and this is because all of our variants have the same state value so i'm going to select our default ones our hover states our active states our focus states and our disabled states and now we don't get any warnings and we're ready to use our variants. Okay, so now we have our variants beautifully set up and it's time to try them out. For that, we're going to bring in copies of our components and there are different ways to do this. So the first one would be just select the one you want and whilst pressing Alt in the keyboard, you drag it outside of the component boundaries. Another option would be to select the variant you want, Control C, and by selecting somewhere outside of the component area, you paste it. And in case your components aren't in the same file as you want to bring your copies in, you can also use the assets tab. And here you will find that instead of having all of your variants listed, they are all gathered by one component, which is the button one the master one and it is represented by the first one of the whole variant you will find there's a little variance icon at the top right or at the right side here and if you hover over it you'll get the number of variants that that component has so you can just select the variant and grab it into our viewport. The power of variants is that you can switch between them and select the precise combination of values to get the one you want. So for example, if I want focused icon version of it, I'll just go to the component area and select the icon and the focused version. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the true power of variants happen when you make a change in one of the copies and then switch between one another and you can see that that change remains but this only happens because the layers in the main variants are following three rules they have the same name they are of the same type and they have the same hierarchy level I have isolated two of these variants to explain this in a bit more detail. So as you can see, I have these two default and hover variants here and they both have an icon inside. If I grab a copy of one of them and change the color of the icon to let's say pink, now I can switch between default and hover and the pink icon remains. But if I were to change the name of one of those icons to let's say icon, now the change is not going to remain because we're not following those rules. In case you're designing with this already and you don't remember the rules, we have created a little button here. If you press on it, you'll get a screen with all of this explained in a bit of detail. So back to our variants, there's also something I'd like to show you and it's especially useful if you're already using components in Pembot and it's going to help you migrate into variants if that's what you'd like. So if we select a variant, we can see that its name is a combination of all of its property values, right? So if I were to grab this variant outside of the component area, I will be turning it into a component. And this component, its name begins with the name of the component with variants that it used to belong to, and then followed by those property values. But in this case, they're separated by slashes because that's the structure we use with components to differentiate between the folders in which this component lives in the assets tab. As we've dragged it out, we can also drag it back in and you see that the properties and property values are still the correct ones. So nothing is irreversible. You don't have to worry about that at all. And this leads us to the next part, which is how to combine several components that we already have created into variants. So for that, I have prepared an avatar that is composed of three parts. In this case, the ears, the eyes and the nose. And I have different components of different animals with those three parts differentiated. So as you can see, each part has a name that is avatar, the name of the animal and the body part. Right now, if we go to the assets tab, we have so many folders. It is a mess actually difficult to to understand to gather and if we want in this avatar here if we want to um, put 
these rabbit ears instead of bear ears. I have to go to the swap panel, go back, find the rabbit and select the ears. So obviously that's not ideal. You're probably already dealing with this and your files look similar to this. So we have a solution for that. You grab the components and this button will appear here. And because all the name that I showed earlier is properly set up, now we have two properties. The first one has all of the animal names and the second one has all of those face parts. So I'm just going to change this property one for animal and that second part it's going to be called part and now we have a set of variants and this is great because now in our creature we can quickly just say that we want it to be a penguin's eyes owl body and uh, maybe cat eyes instead and we get this wonderful bird so those were for the variance functionality, but those are not the only ones that are included in the 2.10. In Penbot, we're constantly working on making the token section better. And in this release, we have six new tokens included. The first one is a number token, which is a generic token. It doesn't have units and it will be very useful for future updates. The other tokens are typographic tokens. We have font family token, font weight, letter spacing, text case, and text decoration token. Now it's the turn for the quality of life features. Up until now, by selecting the board tool, you could create any shape and then go to the size presets in the design tab in order to select the specific one you want. But now you can just, by selecting the board tool, select the size you want your new board to be and then click on the viewport for it to be created. Another small but interesting feature for this new release is that up until now in Benpot, you could select an item and by pressing alt while hovering over the surrounding elements you were able to get the distance in between them but you were not able to move that item around whilst consulting this distance now you're able to do both things at the same time very useful indeed so these are all of the new features included in the 2.10 release and I hope you liked it. I hope you find it useful and I would love to see you using all of these features in the near future. So thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.